Santa. One snowy morning, Dolly the ladybird turned to Berry the snail and said, Hey Berry, Santa's coming tonight. Really? Berry wondered. That's right, he leaves presents in the boots of good children. Remember to put your boots in the window. That evening, Berry cleaned his boots and popped them in the window. He was so excited when he went to bed that he couldn't get to sleep. He stared out at the sky to see when Santa would appear with his reindeer sleigh. Dolly got up early the next morning. She ran straight to the window. Her boots were packed with presents, colouring pencils and a big red apple. Berry ran straight to his window too. He was very excited. He couldn't wait to see what Santa had brought him. But oh dear, his little boots were empty. Berry was so upset that he didn't see the huge red parcel in the other window. He looked inside his boots again and again. He shook them upside down, but there was nothing in them. He was so sad that he decided to run away. Santa didn't bring me anything, but I've been such a good little snail. Dolly went over to Berry's house. Hello, look what I got from Santa. Dolly started to worry. She knocked and knocked, but Berry didn't open the door. Where's Berry gone? I have to find him. Stanley the stag beetle, Balthazar the bee and Flutter the butterfly went with her. Berry? Berry! 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 <laughs> it was getting dark by the time the four friends found Berry. He was sitting on a tree stump and crying. Dolly ran to him. What's wrong, Berry? What happened? Santa didn't bring me anything, but I've been such a good little snail. Don't be silly. I'm sure you got a present, Dolly reassured her friend. Maybe it was so big, Santa couldn't fit it in your boots and he put it somewhere else. No, I didn't get anything. I don't think Santa's real at all. Just then, a sleigh appeared in the sky. It was being pulled by two reindeers. Ho, 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 Santa waved at the children. I hope you all liked your presents. See you again next year. Berry was so surprised. Let's all go to Berry's and look for his present. The little snail felt much better already. They saw the big red parcel the minute they walked into Berry's house. Look, your present's in the other window. There it is. It's wonderful. Berry opened the present. It was a colourful wind chime. When Berry shook it, the little bells knocked into each other and made a pretty tinkling sound. It's beautiful. Stanley fixed the wind chime by the door and they all said good night to Berry. Berry jumped happily into bed and fell fast asleep to the tinkling of the chime. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Carnival. Winter was nearly over and the forest friends were sitting in Dolly's house. 
It's time we started getting ready for the carnival, Flutter the Butterfly said. What are you going to dress up as? Berry asked. It's a secret, Flutter answered. You have to keep your costume a secret so that we can surprise each other at the carnival. You're right. Let's go home and get started. We've only got a few days left, Balthazar said. Berry quickly made up his mind. He decided to dress up as a mushroom. He used a white sheet for a cape and made a hat out of a red bowl. He painted white dots on the bowl. Dolly made a flower costume. She cut leaves out of green paper and sewed them on a green blanket. That was her dress and she made petals out of purple paper. Balthazar the bee and Betty the bumblebee worked together. Balthazar dressed up as a devil and Betty dressed up as an angel. Bubble the baby beetle sat in his hammock and started to make his lion costume. The lights were on in every home in the forest on the night before the carnival. Everybody was working on their costume and busy preparing for the celebrations the following day. Then the big day arrived. The forest friends decided to have the carnival at Stanley's house. They all worked hard and decorated the stag beetle's home with coloured streamers and balloons. While this was going on, Rosita the rose beetle was busy making delicious cakes at her house. Dolly, Leapy and Eddie the potato beetle all lent a hand. Then the time came for them all to put their costumes on. Stanley dressed up as a dice and waited for his friends. The first to arrive were Berry and Dolly. He was dressed as a mushroom and she was dressed as a flower. Then Balthazar came as a little devil and Betty as an angel, with Flutter in a crab costume. Leapy looked just like a cactus. Bubble was dressed as a lion, Eddie was a chef, and Rosita was a bunch of grapes. Her dress was covered in shiny balloons. The firefly was dressed as a pencil, and the flea was an octopus. Sam came as a soldier, and one of the little ants was dressed up as a pancake. Suddenly, Zephyr the dragonfly burst in crying. It's gone! My beautiful princess dress has disappeared! I washed it and I hung it out to dry, but the wind blew it away! Zephyr sobbed, and the others tried to comfort her. I don't need my soldier hat, I've got a sword, Sam Snail suggested. No, that's for Boys, I had a lovely princess dress, but the wind blew it away. We'll make you a new costume, Leapy said. A sun costume. Zephyr liked this idea very much. This yellow curtain will make a great cape, Dolly shouted. And these yellow pieces of paper can be the sun's rays, Stanley said, and took some of the streamers down. They cut, glued, sewed and stitched and the beautiful sun costume was ready in no time. I can lend you my little lantern. The pencil doesn't really need a lantern, laughed the firefly. Thank you, Zephyr said. She was so happy, she blushed. The forest friends danced and sung all night and agreed Zephyr had the most special costume of all. As what could be more special than a sun that shone at night? Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Easter eggs. Easter had arrived at last. Flutter the Butterfly Girl, Rosita the Rose Beetle, Leapy the Grasshopper Girl and Zephyr the Dragonfly all gathered together at Dolly's house to paint eggs for Easter. 
How many eggs do we have to paint? Rosita asked. Now let's see, Berry is certain to come and visit tomorrow, but so is Balthazar, Stanley, Eddie, Bubble, Alfonso and Sam Snail. That means we need to paint seven eggs each. We better get started. I'm sure that the boys will love them, Flutter told the others. It's time to go home. I've got to get up early tomorrow to make pancakes for the boys, Flutter said. I'm going to bake scones, Rosita said. And I'm going to make an apple strudel, Dolly added. All the girls got up bright and early the next morning. Flutter hurried into the kitchen, put on her apron and mixed up a big batch of pancake batter. Rosita popped her apron on and started to knead her scone dough. Dolly rolled her pastry out and Zephyr made a sponge roll. Leapy woke up feeling quite excited. Boys never get up early, I've still got plenty of time to bake an apple pie. And she put a big basket of apples on the table. Oh dear. The basket of apples tipped over and knocked her pretty painted Easter eggs onto the floor. They were all ruined. Oh, my eggs! Now what am I going to do? What will I give to my visitors? The little grasshopper girl sobbed as she ran to Dolly's house. Dolly, I've smashed all seven of my eggs! Help me! I haven't got time, Leapy. I'm busy baking. But I've still got two unpainted eggs. If you paint them quickly, they'll be dry by the time the boys come. Rosita! Oh, my eggs got smashed! Can you help? I'm too busy baking, but you can have these three white eggs. You've still got time to paint them if you hurry. Flutter! Help! I've got to paint my eggs all over again. The first lot got broken. All of them? I am sorry, but I can't help now. My pancakes will burn. You can have these two unpainted eggs I've got left over. Something terrible has happened, Zephyr. I've broken all the eggs I painted yesterday. Please help me because I haven't got time to paint another seven eggs. Leapy complained to her dragonfly friend. I know who can help you. Come with me. The two friends ran through the forest all the way to a cave. The spider stumbled sleepily from his home. Oh, can you help us, spider? Zephyr asked. Leapy's eggs all got broken. And now she has to paint new ones and there's not much time left. The boys will be coming to visit her soon. If I have to, the spider grumbled. Thank you. You're very kind. Leapy got out all her paints and brushes and the two of them started to paint the eggs. The spider could paint three eggs at once. We're ready, Leapy said with a happy laugh. And then she thanked the spider for his help and she arranged the pretty eggs in a dish. There soon came a knock at Leapy's front door. She opened the door and was greeted by all seven boys at once. Happy Easter, Leapy! They had all come to see Leapy, who offered them a dish and they all chose a pretty Easter egg. I haven't got any cakes to offer you, I'm afraid, Leapy said in a whisper, and then she told them all about what had happened. Don't worry about that, the boys laughed. We ate strudel at Dolly's house, scones at Rosita's house, pancakes at Flutter's house, and sponge roll at Zephyr's house. Our tummies are full. Mary and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Snowman One cold winter morning, Berry the Snail knocked on Dolly's front door. Let's go and play with my sledge in the snow. Dolly quickly put on her winter coat and her hat, scarf and gloves. She sat on the sledge and the little snail pulled her along. Eventually, the snow stopped. Berry and Dolly enjoyed the winter sunshine. They sledged down the steep side of the hill. Look at that 
that super snowman! Berry shouted. Oh dear! We're going to hit it! But it was too late. The sledge ran right into the snowman that stood at the foot of the hill. Did you hurt yourself? Berry asked Dolly. No, I didn't, but I think we've ruined the snowman. Yes, it tipped right over, Berry said. I'm going to eat its carrot nose. Let's have a snowball fight with the snow from the snowman. Berry and Dolly started to throw snowballs. It was a lot of fun. Soon there was almost nothing left of the snowman. Just then, Balthazar the bee appeared and said hello to his friends. Do you want to throw snowballs with us? I'm too busy. I've brought a hat and a scarf to put on my snowman I built yesterday. Haven't you seen it? Berry and Dolly looked at each other. Oh dear, Berry whispered. Balthazar must be looking for the snowman we hit. They didn't dare tell Balthazar that they'd knocked his snowman over. No, we haven't seen a snowman. I can't find my snowman anywhere. Berry and Dolly felt very sorry for the little bee. Don't be sad, Berry said finally. Let's build a new one. OK, Balthazar sniffled. Dolly made the biggest snowball. It went on the bottom. Balthazar made the middle one for the snowman's tummy. And Berry made the smallest snowball for the snowman's head. Then Dolly lifted Berry up so he could stick the head on top. Then the snowman was finished and Balthazar could finally put the stripy scarf around its neck. Perry took a big jump and put the red saucepan on its head for a hat. Hey, it looks really super, Balthazar said enthusiastically. Balthazar, we've got something to tell you. We smashed your first snowman. We slid right into it with our sledge. It was an accident. What? It was you? Balthazar was very surprised, but then he soon forgave his friends. This snowman looks much better than the first one, he declared. Come on, let's sledge down the hill together. Berry, Dolly and Balthazar played with the sledge until it got dark and were very careful not to hit their new snowman. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Hot Air Balloon One summer afternoon, a storm blew up in the forest. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the snail sat watching it from the spotty house. The wild wind twisted the trees and blew the roofs off houses. The rain came down in buckets. When the rain and wind finally stopped, the two friends took a look around the forest. Look, Dolly, the wind blew this tree over. Berry said. And the rain washed away my flowers, Dolly sighed. Leapy the grasshopper came rushing in. Dolly, Berry, come quickly. Someone's lying in the meadow. The friends found an oil beetle lying in the meadow. Oh, what happened to you? 
What's your name? Who are you? I'm Adet the Oil Beetle. I live up in the mountains, but the wind blew me down here, and I hit my head really hard. My wings are weak, and I can't fly. I don't know how I'm going to get home. The Oil Beetle sniffled. They lifted Adet up and carried her into Leapy's house. Don't worry, Dolly said eventually. We'll help you get home. That afternoon, Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly and Stanley the stag beetle all came to see Adette. They tried to think of ways to help her get home. The best thing would be a hot air balloon, Stanley said. But what could we use to make a balloon? Berry asked. We could use blankets, pillows and sheets, Flutter suggested. And curtains and towels too, Stanley added. They got to work immediately. They stitched all the blankets, curtains, sheets and towels together. It took a while to get everything finished, but Adette helped as much as she could. Every day she was feeling stronger and even her head had stopped hurting. It's ready! said Stanley. Thank you, the oil beetle replied happily. Hooray! We're flying! Berry exclaimed. Wow, it's beautiful! We can see the whole forest from here! Dolly laughed. It started to get dark. When they eventually arrived, Adette cried out, Hooray! I'm home! Thank you. Please stay the night and watch the shooting stars with me. We'd love to, the little friends said. Adette quickly made them something to eat and gave them delicious cakes and tea. After dinner, they all sat down in front of Adette's house and waited for shooting stars to appear in the night sky. Hooray! I saw a shooting star! Berry exclaimed excitedly. Me too! Dolly said. And me! added Stanley. They went into Adette's house when it got colder and sat and watched the stars through the window. They all made a wish and fell fast asleep. As she slowly drifted to sleep, Adette wished that someday she would meet her new friends again. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Earache. It was a sunny autumn afternoon and Dolly decided to go and see her friend Berry. I'm going down to the stream to collect pebbles. Do you want to come? But Berry didn't feel like going out to play. I don't know, Dolly. I'm very cold and I've got a headache and my ears really hurt. Oh, Berry, your ears are all red, Dolly said. And you've got a temperature. I'll fly and fetch Dr Owl. The ladybird flew straight to Dr Owl's tree. Dr Owl, you need to come quickly. Berry feels very poorly. Dr Owl quickly packed his doctor's bag, put on his white coat and hurried to see the sickly snail. Hello there, Berry. Let me have a look at you. I need to listen to your chest. So Berry took off his pyjama top and breathed in like the doctor said. Open wide. I need to look at your throat now. I don't want to, Berry snapped. But I have to see if it's red or not, Dr Owl explained and shone a torch down the little snail's throat. And now I'll take a peek inside your ear. 
This was really too much for Berry. He started to cry and clamped his hands over his ears. Don't be silly, Berry. It won't hurt a bit. And Dolly held Berry's hand to make him feel better. She was right. It didn't hurt a bit. Well, Berry... Dr Owl explained. You've bad earache. You've gone and caught a nasty cold. You need to have a spoonful of this medicine every day. Drink lots of sweet tea and put bags of warm wheat on your ears. Berry's friends came to help him right away. Balthazar brought honey, Flutter brought chamomile flowers and Stanley brought rose hips and they made tea for the patient. Dolly warmed the wheat in a pan and poured it into little cloth bags. Hold these on your ears until they cool down. Berry put the bags on and didn't take them off until they cooled down. Next morning, Dolly found a handful of shiny pebbles on Berry's table. Wow, Berry, lovely pebbles. Who gave you these? I found them down by the stream. Berry said proudly. You went down to the stream? Dolly asked angrily. That was very silly, Berry. You're still not better. You'll get sick again. And Dolly was right. Berry was soon back in bed with a temperature. His little friends came to visit him every day. They read him stories and put on puppet shows. But just as Berry started to get better, Dolly started feeling worse. Now she'd got earache, and this time Berry took care of Dolly. He made her tea and warmed the wheat bags for her ears. Now it was time for Dr Owl to pay Dolly a visit. Gracious me, it seems we have a new patient. I think you must have caught it from Berry. He told Dolly exactly what to do. Then he took another quick look at Berry. You look well enough, but I'll examine you just in case. Everything's fine. You've made a full recovery, little snail. Another few days passed. Dolly did as she was told and took her medicine. She drank plenty of tea and stayed in bed, and she soon felt much better. Dr Owl came to see her one last time and told her she was fine. So now we can go down to the stream together and collect pebbles. Berry was very excited. Hooray! Let's all go down to the stream! Dr Owl's three chicks tweeted. Remember to dress up nice and warm. It's cold outside. But there was no need to warn Dolly and Berry. They both wore a scarf, a hat and warm boots. They stayed and played until it got dark and collected a whole bucket full of shiny pebbles. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Stanley Skates. It was a crispy winter day and Berry and Dolly were walking by the lake. It had frozen over and was covered by a very thick layer of ice. Come on, Dolly, let's slide on the ice, the little snail suggested. The ladybird happily agreed. Berry and Dolly stepped cautiously onto the ice. They held on tightly to each other and began to slide slowly around. They soon warmed up. They fell over every now and then, but when they did, they just laughed and carried on playing. Stanley the stag beetle stood and watched them. Stanley, you have to try this. Come and slide with us, it's so much fun, Berry said to his friend. Stanley was slightly scared but stepped onto the ice out of curiosity. Ah! He yelled as his feet slipped out from under him and he fell on his bottom. Berry and Dolly ran over to him. We'll give you a hand, Stanley. The two friends stood either side of Stanley and guided him slowly forward. Now we'll let go of you and you can try by yourself. Dolly told him. Then the snail and the ladybird let Stanley go. Slow down, Stanley! Dolly shouted, and Stanley tried to stop, but he stumbled and sped into a patch of prickly bushes. Help! 
I'm full of prickles and my antler hurts. It hurts a lot. Dolly ran over quickly to take a look at the injured stag beetle. Don't give up, Dolly said, and bandaged Stanley's painful antler with her dotty scarf. Just then, a beautiful girl beetle slid out onto the ice. She moved over the frozen surface of the water as gracefully as can be. Wow, who are you? I'm Iris the Ice Beetle. Hi, Iris. She's Dolly the Ladybird, he's Stanley the Stag Beetle, and I'm Berry the Snail, Berry said. How do you manage to glide on the ice like that? Stanley asked the stranger. Because I'm wearing ice skates, special shoes that can slide on the ice, Iris replied. You have to buckle them to your boots. Did you make them yourself? Berry asked curiously. Yes, I made them. It's really not that difficult. I can make ice skates for all of you if you like. Hooray! The three friends shouted excitedly. Berry, Dolly, Stanley and Iris went to the forest together. Iris sorted through the branches lying on the ground and eventually found one good for the job. They all got to work, sawing and hammering in tiny nails. Everybody did their share. They're finished, Iris eventually announced and there were three pairs of brand new ice skates sitting on the table. Berry and Dolly felt a little bit nervous as they fastened their new ice skates on, but Stanley was the most worried. Berry and Dolly held on to each other and stepped out onto the ice. Iris helped Stanley. Sliding on the ice is so much better with ice skates, Stanley laughed. Iris held Stanley's hand for a long time before he was happy to slide all on his own. He soon learned how to turn and start and stop. I can do it! I can ice skate! He announced at the end of a very long but happy day. Bubbles Tower. It was a lovely summer afternoon and Bubble the baby beetle decided to play with his colourful building blocks. I'm going to build a tall tower with my blocks, he thought to himself and carried them to a hill nearby. He tipped the bright blocks out of their box in the shade of a big oak tree. As the tower grew, it was harder and harder for Bubble to reach the top. He had to stand on tiptoe and was just reaching for the top when his hand slipped and the tower tumbled to the ground. Oh no, Bubble complained. Now I have to start all over again. So the baby beetle started again from the beginning. The tower soon began to grow and was very tall indeed. But, oh dear, an acorn from the oak tree knocked the baby beetle's tower down. My lovely tower! My tower's ruined again! It was the silly oak tree's fault, he said out loud. So little Bubbles started again, but this time he moved out from under the old oak tree. He was stacking the blocks on top of each other when his friends Berry the Snail, Dolly the Ladybug and Stanley the Stag Beetle came walking over. Wow, you've built a beautiful tower, Bubble, they all said. Yes, it's nearly finished. All I have to do is put the red triangle on the very top. But then the wind blew and toppled his tall tower. Bubble got very angry. I don't believe it. I don't want to build towers anymore. I'm going home. His friends ran after him. 
Bubble, wait! Why don't we rebuild your tower together? No, I don't want to build towers anymore. You can't build a really high tower with this many blocks anyway, grumbled. He went into his house and slammed the door shut. How can we help Bubble? Dolly puzzled. We've got to think of a way to cheer him up somehow. I know what we can do, Stanley said. I've got another set of building blocks at home. I'll go and fetch them so we can build a really high tower together. That's a super idea. I've a box full of building blocks too. And I'll bring mine. We'll build the tallest tower ever. Berry pulled his blocks in a little trailer. Dolly pushed hers in a wheelbarrow and Stanley carried his in a big basket. Hello, Bubble. Look, we brought our building blocks. Why don't we build a big tower together? Dolly asked nicely. We could build it in your house so that the wind won't knock it down again, Berry added. Goodness me! Look at all those building blocks! We'll be able to build a very big tower with them! The baby beetle said with a smile. Now it's time to pop the red triangle on the top. You should put it on, Bubble, Stanley suggested. Hooray! It's finished! They all shouted together. Then Berry, Dolly and Stanley said goodnight to Bubble. The baby beetle went to bed very happy that night. He stared at the tower until he fell fast asleep.